Right guys, uh, welcome back. Today we're going to have a walk around my camper van. It's a 2005 Auto Sleeper Duetto, which is a two berth on a 2.4 diesel transit. It's uh, 5.6 metres long. It's quite tall. It's uh, about 3.2 I think with the TV aerial on top. But it's uh, small enough to go the cheapest way on the ferries, which is all that's important. Now for a 16 year old Transit, it's uh, in pretty good nick. There's no external rust at all. There's a couple of minor stone chips on the bonnet, but uh, basically it's in pretty good nick. I bought it with 18,000 miles on. It's now got 78,000 miles on. Uh, I've had it, I think for about six years, something like that. And this is the van that's going to appear in all the videos in the channel. And it's a van that in two days time will be in France. So we'll have a proper look round, shall we? Let's get the side door undone and see if we can have a look round. So stepping inside, we go into instant darkness, but never mind. In front of us is a double sofa, settee, whatever you want to call it. And on our right, I'll oh, step in, it's easier. And on our right is a single seat, which uh, is has got a seat belt. So it's a, a legal three seater, which is slightly inconvenient because four seats would be uh, better. Underneath this single seat, there's a storage box, which basically has all my clothes in for a long trip. And then above that, in the box is a TV stand. There is a 12 volt socket, main socket, and an aerial. However, I've never watched TV in a motor caravan, and I've owned them for the last 40 years, which gives an idea of how old I am. Uh, but this makes an ideal parking spot at night for your books, specs, a charging dock for all your uh, iPads and all that sort of stuff, so it's very useful. And then above that, carbon monoxide detector and a large roof vent which is uh, mosquito netted and also has blinds which just pull over. You can have it any way you like. It's very large, uh, great in the hot weather. And then along the top above the single seat, there are simple pouches which are great for sticking lightweight things in. So at the minute it's got some specs, some uh, hand sanitizer, that sort of stuff. And then we have a speaker system, stereo in the rear, uh, with a reading light on this side, reading light on this side. And this box is the over cab storage, which we'll come back to in a minute because it's not as convenient as it looks initially. In fact, we shall open it now. Inside, as well as the cushions, pillows I should say, there are three cushions which are required for me to make up the bed. Now, I'll go into further detail on that when we get down there. So, shut that again. We've got a double fluorescent above and then above the sofa, we have an open shelf, which is really handy because when the bed's made up, you can just reach up and get in the morning, get all the stuff you need. Uh, very, very handy. Love that. Really excellent. And then above that, two cupboards, which are tall but shallow. They really should have some sort of restraining bar or something across there to allow you to tuck things in behind them and then it would be more useful. It was a, something I intended doing, but never quite got round to. So anyway, you have two above the sofa. And then looking backwards, it's quite bright in that window. Looking backwards next to the uh, settee, we have a three burner stove with a grill and an oven. I don't use the grill or the oven very often, to be honest. And strangely, there is a cutout for four burners but only through three were ever fitted. Don't ask me why. There's another window directly above the uh, K 
kitchen and another roof vent directly above the kitchen for ventilation. And then two larger cupboards, this one for food, it's a decent size, and that one has uh, plates and cups and that sort of stuff. And then down next to the cooker is a large cupboard, which is a pull-out pull out drawer for your cutlery. And in a decent amount of space, again, you've got larger cooking items, bowls, that sort of stuff on the top. And then the storage for tins and other stuff like that underneath. And then a three-way fridge, standard Dometic, which is pretty good. If it's really, really, really hot, it's not freezing cold, but generally pretty good. Quite happy with it. And then above, we have a sink. And a draining board and then there's a useful clip on the wall which I'm trying to struggling to operate one-handed there we go which keeps the uh, cover up and out of the way so useful size and then our control panel which is very small you've got habitation and vehicle for your batteries you can test charge You've got a master switch, a pump switch, and a light switch to isolate those circuits. And then next to that, uh, the control for the Eberspacher diesel heater, which is really, really good. Very, very efficient. This isn't a very big van, and there's not a lot of available space to heat. So I've been in sub, well sub-zero temperatures in the Pyrenees in February and been really toasty. It's a really, really good heater. Another 12-volt socket. And then the back doors have uh, pouches, top and bottom, for storage of stuff like carrier bags. And then another uh, fluorescent at the rear, again, twin filament. And then, it's slightly awkward to get into. We have standard uh, motor caravan toilet, really. Fold-down sink, WC. Shower, shower curtain. Uh, towel rail. And at the minute, a basin and a carrier bag with some electrical gear in, which we will come to again in a minute. And then if the toilet area is too small, you can move that across. That clips in under there. Shut the curtain at the back and you have a large secluded bathroom. Which is pretty good. Right, it might be slightly dark. Apologies for that. The dash is fairly straightforward. Two large dials, small one for temperature and fuel. And your usual array of warning lights. The only drawback is the clock and the odometer are LCD. And it is a common problem on these that the uh, LCDs start to lose definition. And this one's starting. Once it's had a decent run, you know, so if I left here and went to Birmingham, say, by the time I got to Birmingham, it'd be functioning perfectly well. But short journeys, stop, stop, start. It's rather indistinct. So it's on the way out, sadly. You can get replacement dashes, but uh, obviously I will try not to spend the money on those if at all possible. And then next to that, we have the usual temperature control. There is traction control on this one, There's a, but I've never used it and never felt the need. Um, and then a large glove box. The driving position is superb. The seats are really comfortable. I've done several 12 hour days in this van, uh, motorway and non-motorway, and the comfort is excellent. Right, quick look under the bonnet. We've got a 2.4 litre Duratorque direct injection engine. Uh, now this is pre-common rail, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion. It makes it a lot easier to work on and service. It is a turbocharged intercooled motor. Produces 125 brake horsepower, which uh, is plenty powerful enough in my opinion. Uh, the tachometer is marked with a economy area up to 3000 rpm and at 3000 rpm 
you're doing the legal limit, 70 miles an hour. So it's a powerful van. It also does about 33 mpg. I check the mileage and fuel consumption on every single trip this van has done, which is a bit uh, on the spectrum, I suppose. But there you go, that's just what I'm like. And it's almost always 32, 33, 34, consistently over the last uh, six years or so. Uh, so, not really much to tell you about the engine. It uh, doesn't burn oil, doesn't use water. I service it fully every year because the parts being afforded are very cheap, very, very cheap. I use uh, fully synthetic oil of the uh, specification that Ford recommend, which they do actually recommend fully synthetic for this, which I was surprised at, but according to my people who supply the parts, that's what Ford says, so that's what it gets. Uh, not a lot else to tell you, really. Five-speed gearbox, rear-wheel drive, I'm perfectly happy with it. I can't say much more. Let's move back inside. Right, back inside for the bed. Do you know, while we're here, both uh, batteries, leisure and main, sit under the, the driver's seat, just in front of the orange covers there, uh, which would make it inaccessible for jump starts. So Ford, thankfully, put a post in the engine bay so you can jump start from in there. Right, so both seats are uh, pushed as far forward as they can go and the backs are wound forward as well. Now, there is no way I have found where I can put the camera anywhere to show you how this all working, so we're going to have to do it in stages, so please bear with me. So first of all, the single seat has a flap at the front and a button mechanism at the side and you operate that and the seat slides forward so let me just put you down for a second while I sort that out and there it is and then the sofa settee whatever you want to call it also has a, the same release mechanism there so there it is pulled out and the backrest in place. Now, if you were uh, under five foot ten, you could use that as a double bed across the van and not have to worry about pushing the seats forward and not have to worry about carrying the additional parts. Unfortunately, I'm six foot one and I can't sleep across the van. So bear with me again while I get the cushions out of the uh, top cupboard and you'll see what we have to do. So the three cushions that are kept in the top over cab storage are now in place between the front seats and the double bed you saw earlier which now gives you a bed six foot three long approximately so a king size bed without a shadow of a doubt and uh, despite being made up of so many different bits I find it quite comfortable so a good bed good size which Neatly, I think, brings us on to the disadvantages of this van. So let me put the camera down and we'll talk about them. Right, so that's the van. Now, nothing is perfect, and this van certainly isn't. It has its drawbacks as a conversion. Uh, most of them, to be fair, is due to the size of the vehicle. There's not much you can do about that. If you have a compact vehicle, you've got less storage solutions. So the, the problems are... The bed cushions, as you saw, having to use the uh, storage up above just to carry the cushions to make the bed is a monumental waste of space. The second item is the uh, electrical hookup. The cable has nowhere to live. You could try and squeeze it under the settee with all the other stuff, but if it's wet or dirty, you don't want it going in places where there might be clothes and other stuff. So it goes in a bag for life from Tesco's which sits in the uh, toilet and then when we get to wherever we're going it goes underneath the van the, the bag goes underneath the van the electric hookup obviously gets connected so that's not very convenient either the sink is very small so we carry a basin a bowl a washing up bowl uh, which also 
sits in the toilet while we're traveling. Gas. The gas locker holds a, I think it's got a five kilogram propane in there at the minute. And I also have a small uh, camping gas bottle, which I take with me on longer trips like the one coming up, just in case I run out, because you can get that anywhere. I've not had to use it yet, to be fair. So the five kilogram bottle tends to last a couple of months without any problem. But again, it's limiting if you're going to go for longer periods. But there again, this van is probably more a holiday van than an extended travel van. And that's about it, really. Uh, the important things are it's comfortable. It's got a good bed, a good fridge. The ventilation's very good. The insulation's very good. The heating's very good for when it's cold. What more can you ask? The other stuff is really very, very minor compared to that. So there you go. That's my hour, my partner and I's auto sleeper duetto. And if you follow the channel, you're going to see it on the continent very soon. So please come back. Please uh, subscribe if you think this might have content of any use or relevance or interest to you. So thanks for watching. I will hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye for now.